I just posted a new paper on SSRN on gold. Gold is at a record high, uh, over $2,000 uh, per ounce. The research is co-authored with my longtime colleagues, uh, Claude Erb and Tadas Visconto. Indeed, uh, back in 2013, I published a paper with Claude called The Golden Dilemma. And uh, it's actually my highest downloaded uh, paper. And we looked at gold uh, over thousands of years. So one thing with gold, it's been around a long time. Things like the US dollar have not been around a long time. And we've got good data. So one of the first things that we established was that gold actually historically has held its value. So we did this very interesting exercise where we determined what the wages of Roman centurions were in gold. And then we looked at that amount of gold that they were paid multiplied by the price today. And you come up with the wage that is pretty close to uh, like an army captain's wage. So over the very long term, gold holds its value. Another way of looking at that is uh, to think of gold. If we inflation adjust the price of gold, then that price remains relatively constant over time. And when I say over time, it's really the long term because gold can definitely deviate. But nevertheless, that gives us a framework. If the real price of gold is constant, then we can figure out what that constant price is and then look to see uh, how it fluctuates uh, through time. And it does fluctuate. So the other thing in our paper, gold is volatile. So think of gold as something that's as volatile as the stock market. And what we've seen historically is that you will get a deviation from that constant real price. It will get expensive and then it gets cheaper. So it's like reversion. So uh, in this most recent paper, we update and find that uh, the price of gold today, if we inflation adjust it, uh, is very close to uh, an all-time high. So there are two other periods with a higher um, inflation adjusted gold price, and that is January 1980 and August 2011. Now first let me tell you what happened if you were a buyer at those very high real prices. So if you're a buyer in January 1980, then over the next five years, you lost 55%. If you were a buyer in August 2011, then over the next five years, you lost 28%. And this is basically the idea of kind of mean reversion. So we're at this point that's very high. So why? And it is a little puzzling to think about it. So think of the traditional reasons that people buy gold. So the stated reasons are, well, gold is a good inflation hedge. And the second reason is, well, gold is a safe haven. So Claude and I deal with both of those stories in uh, The Golden Dilemma the 2013 paper. And let me give you the short version. So gold is an unreliable inflation hedge. So we did this exercise where we looked at the uh, surprise in inflation or the change in inflation rate, and then uh, see how that related to the change in the price of gold. We found no relation. So at least over uh, a one-year horizon, gold does not appear to be a reliable hedge for unexpected inflation. That said, and to be clear, over the very long term, gold holds its value. But 
The problem is, what's the very long term? So our analysis goes back over 2,000 years. So the very long term could be centuries. And that's not very relevant for uh, the average uh, investor. We also deal with the safe haven argument. We look at various economic crises historically and find that gold is unreliable. Okay, so um, what is kind of going on? Um, well, today we're in an economic crisis, the COVID-19 crisis. But look at the markets. So the stock market fell uh, dramatically in March, but it's come back. It's pricing a V-shaped recovery. What about the bond market? Well, the bond market, uh, the yields are low, but the inflation forecast built into those yields over the next 10 years is about 1.5%. So relatively benign inflation. Yet the price of gold has gone steadily up. So the main innovation in our paper is an analysis of the holdings of the two main gold ETFs. And what we show is that there is a very strong correlation between the holdings in terms of uh, troy ounces of gold of these ETFs and the gold price. So in the paper, you can see the graphic and it is remarkable. So before these ETFs, gold was actually difficult to hold if you were uh, just a, a retail investor. So you could buy bullion, but then you'd have to store it, maybe in a safety deposit box at a bank or maybe in a vault uh, in your home. But it's very difficult and expensive to do. However, with the ETF, it's very easy to do. So the ETF actually houses the gold uh, for you and you just buy a share of the ETF. Of course, uh, before the ETFs, you could buy gold mining stocks, but that's not the same thing. So we've got a much larger retail presence in the gold market. So what about this correlation that essentially the price is going up and the gold holdings are going up at the ETFs. What does that mean? Well, I'll, I'll tell you what it means. It means as the gold price is going up, people are buying more of the gold. And that might strike you as a little unusual because the, the fundamental rule of investment is to buy low and sell high. But the opposite is happening. People are buying more as the price goes higher. Okay, so you're buying high. So Warren Buffett has talked about this before, and he refers to retail investors like this as bandwagon investors. And what does that mean? So essentially, uh, investors see the price of gold surging, they jump on the bandwagon to enjoy the party. And in jumping on that bandwagon, they actually uh, validate their hypothesis because the more people jumping on the bandwagon, the price goes even higher. So the price is being driven up by people joining in. So basically validating uh, their truth for a while. It doesn't last forever. And we've seen this in many, many different assets. These investors create their own truth for a while. So in terms of my research, you look at it two ways. So one way, um, the real price of gold is very high. It's about double where um, the historical average is. 
And you might think that there could be some uh, mean reversion as a result, like we saw in 1980 and we saw in 2011. Another way to look at it is that we've got a bandwagon situation. The price is going up, people jumping on the bandwagon, driving that price up, and at some point, there'll be a major, major correction. The message is kind of the same. However, while both stories tell us that the risk is asymmetric, and what I mean by that is there's a higher probability of the downside than the upside, it doesn't tell us the timing. And that's important as an investor. So some investors think that they can ride a bubble. So you invest, you get in at a very high price, it continues to go high, and at some point you're smart enough to bail out and take your profits. A very dangerous game. But the key thing in my paper is that gold is volatile. And my paper doesn't say when a correction will occur. And we know from the historical analysis that there could be deviations from that constant real price for a very, very long time. However, and I think that this is something to take pause on, um, you get to pick and choose when you invest. And this is true for any asset. And I do think that you need to exercise caution when investing at an all-time high.